The subject of our contemplation today is what to do when odds are against the people of God. When you look everywhere, this is part two of that message. What to do when all odds are against you. We are going to go into biblical history. We are going to dig out treasure, what's in marble, to encourage ourselves that the present situations are not without solutions. When I taught on part one yesterday, I profiled three people, you remember? Who was the first one? David. I said the first option available to us when all odds are against us is to flee to a place of safety. David ran to the land of Philistines. But when he got there, he was not a familiar terrain. He had to become a gang leader, raiding, maiming, killing in order to survive. But he learned his lessons when all that he had gathered for over a year, everything was burned down. He knew what goes around will come around. So it is for every criminally minded person from Nigeria living in the places they consider safe. When you go into crime, the long arm of the law will catch you there. I profiled the second person. Who was that? Elijah, what was his petition? Lord, kill me now. I'm not better than my fathers. But instead of killing him, our God who takes care of the weary and those who are burned out sent angels to feed him. The same person who sent ravens to feed him, who sent the widow woman to feed him, now said, I'm increasing your menu. The journey is too great for you. And after he had been fed twice, he covered in 40 days and 40 nights the same descent that Israel covered for 40 years. And then I presented the Lord Jesus Christ as a baby who had to be carried into a safe place in Egypt because of Herod. So our first option when we are surrounded by earth is to want to escape. But be careful what you are escaping into. It's better to go to Beersheba like Jacob to find out the mind of God because you may relocate and suffocate. It's always good to stay where God has put you. So he asked Elijah, Elijah, what are you doing here? Thank God he did not dismiss him from service. He showed him how to have succession. And how to be retired gloriously. The Lord sent chariot of fire to separate him from Elijah. And a wild wind too came to heaven. May our end be glorious in the mighty name of Jesus. Today we will consider the second option that we have when earths are against us. What is this second option? It is to blame God for our ordeal. Or insinuate his culpability for the odds against us. Has anyone in this sanctuary ever blamed God before? Let me see your hand if you have said, "Uh uh-huh, thank you. Any other person? Be honest with me. I know you are very religious people. I know know you love God so much. I know you never blame God. Is blame. Huh? Oluwa, what is this one? Lord Jesus, why me? Why me? What have I done to deserve this? Lord, Lord. I remember the day after the election in 2011. My whole house got burnt. My law library went in flames. I looked at the place. So let's go. Took my family out. 
We went to Sheraton Hotel to stay for that night before we found a temporary place of abode. You asked my family what happened. I got to Sheraton Hotel, had a heavy meal, pandadiam and agbonosu, and slept from 10 p.m. to 2 p.m. straight away. I woke up with me. I never returned to the house until the contractors moved in to do it. Do you understand me? And they finished it. What is burnt is burnt and moved on. There are some documents I don't have anymore that I treasure. So what? Can you compare that house where I'm living now? So if I begin to falsely accuse God, we will have the stamina to begin to access what heaven has in store for me. The blame game began in the garden. The first person to blame God was Adam. The Lord, it is the woman you gave me. It is part of us in different ways till today. <laughs> to illustrate this message perfectly this morning, I would like to profile a prophet. Can you guess his name? Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a young priest operating in Anathot. One of the meanings of Anathot is poverty. Check your Bible dictionary. He was operating in Anathot, minding in his own business. Like Amos, he was not a prophet. He was satisfied being a priest. Jeremiah was a young priest operating in Anathot. Biblical history has it that Abiathar, the priest, that followed David through thick and thin who was with him was always consulting for him to know the mind of God was banished to Anathot. After he teamed up with Adonijah <laughs> during the power struggle for the throne of Israel. Give me First Kings chapter 1. I'll read 1 to 10. You, you are going to pray with understanding. With clarity. Ah. In the name of Jesus, you will not labor in vain or bring forth for trouble. My prayer for you is that you will not do anything that will disqualify you last minute. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Now King David was old, advanced in years, and they put covers on him, but he could not get warm. Engine to knock, I've told you. The time comes when you, how can you deal with six wives at the age of 30, half 10 concubines, and think that you still remain strong at 70, you died. I wonder, could no more. Therefore, his servant said to him, Let a young woman, a virgin, be sought for our Lord the king, and let her stand before the king. Let her care for him. And let her lie in your bosom, that our Lord the king may be warm. Watch him more. We pay David to bring her. He was a woman's man. So they looked for a virgin. To take care of him and to lie in his bosom and to keep him warm. Okay. So they sought for a lovely young woman throughout all the territory of Israel and found Abishag the Shunammite and brought her to the king. 
The young woman was very lovely and she cared for the king and served him. But the king did not know her. Then Adonijah, the son of Agit, exalted himself saying, I will be king. Have you seen all their videos in recently? Presidential hopefuls. And Adonijah, the son of Agid, exalted himself, saying, I will be king. And he prepared for himself what? Chariots and horsemen and 50 men to run before him. And his father had not rebuked him at any time, saying, why have you done so? He was also very good looking. His mother had born him after Absalom. Ah. Then he conferred with who? Joab, the son of Zeruiah, and with Abiathar, the priest, and they follow and help Adonijah. Consultation is going on now. Heavy duty consultation. But Zadok, the priest, Beniah, the son of Jehoiada, Nathan, the prophet, Shimei, Rei, and the mighty men who belong to David were not with Adonijah. Why? They were waiting for the command of the king. And Adonijah sacrificed sheep and oxen. That's called. What's that called? That's not chariot. That's dispensing from war chest. And Adonijah sacrificed sheep and oxen and fattened cattle by the stone of Sohilet, which is by Enrogel. He also invited all his brothers, the princes, the king's sons, and all the men of Judah, the king's servant, the whole of civil service. Gather them. But he did not invite Nathan the prophet, Benaiah the mighty man, Benaiah the mighty man, or Solomon his brother. Let me jump to connect this business of Anathot. By the time the real king came forth, let's see what happened to this priest who was there through thick and thin with David. First Kings chapter 2 verse 26. And to Abiathar the priest, the king said, this is Solomon, go to Anathoth, to your own fields, for you are deserving of death. But I will not put you to death at this time, because you carry the ark of the Lord God before my father. And because you are afflicted every time my father was afflicted. Stand to your feet. I will not miss it in last minute. In the name of Jesus Christ. I will not run ahead of God. Nothing in my life will disqualify me in last minute. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, I ask for wisdom. I ask for temperance. I ask for understanding. I ask for knowledge. To guide my affairs with discretion in the name of Jesus. That nothing, nothing at all will disqualify me last minute. As I run the race of life, I will finish strong. I will finish well. Oh, pray for yourself this morning. You are not better than Abiathar. He became an opportunist last minute. Join the wrong party. Join the wrong crowd. Join the wrong candidate. Lord, deliver me from every form of presumption. Let me not run ahead of you. Let me not lag behind you. Teach me to wait for you. Anybody but can lolua, cook butter beru, cook butter for ya, cook butter shojorara. Anybody but can lolua, cook butter beru, cook butter for ya, cook butter shojorara. Ilani rala di mo, au butter shojorara. Bayeng bago beshun bago, Gloria Sunny. Bayeng bago beshun bago, Gloria Sunny. By and Bogu Besum Bogu, Loria Sunny. By and Bogu Besum Bogu, Loria Sunny. Sit down. 
This is what I see going on right now in Nigeria. I see people jostling for power, deploying their chariots, dispensing from their watches in preparation for the 2023 presidential election. Many of them will soon find out that my, by means of strength shall no man prevail. Please understand that I will be the first to say that every qualified Nigeria, East, West, North, or South, is free to express his desire or dream to contest for any office during any election period. However, it is the most high God who rules in the kingdom of men, who gives it to whosoever he wills, and who sets over them the lowest of men. Consequently, for the discerning, the greatest factor in any election is God factor. If you agree with me, say amen. amen. I say the greatest factor in any election is the God factor. But the likes of Adonijah are clever by half. They run ahead of their time. The Yoruba say, uh, Brother Bode, uh, Elder Bode, can I say so? Atei rogmo aketi aja, akei leti tan, iwa fabe pamo, shemo wiri, marimi so. Say it with me, akei rogmo, aketi aja, akei leti tan, iwa fabe pamo. Translation. <laughs> the crafty dog full of hindsight and no foresight who decides to keep the knife that was used to cut his hair after the damage was done. Thank you. Listen to Adonijah after his brother was crowned by the order of King David. Listen to him. 1 Kings 2, 13-15. Now Adonijah, the son of Agi, came to Beersheba, the mother of Solomon. So she said, do you come peaceably? He said, peaceably. Peaceably. Moreover, he said, I have something to say to you. And she said, say it. Then he said, you know that the kingdom was mine. Why? It was next in line. <laughs> this fellow I had not read the story of what happened in the house of Jesse. That it was a man who was not called at all. Who was not invited to the anointing service. Who was minding his business, taking care of the sheep at the citadel. Samuel got to the house of Jesse. The elders trembled. Come and thou peaceably said, I come to sacrifice. A divine detour. And they lined up the first seven sons. And when Samuel saw the first one, he said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before me. Uh -uh. And God said to Samuel, Samuel, any of me would you? Oh, no, no, me welcome. Okay, don't, when we start singing now, you blame me when time goes. Samuel, I've refused him. I do not see as men see. You are looking at packaging. You are looking at war chest. You are looking at media moguls and controllers. Uh, I do not look as men look. You look at what I look inside. I have refused him. Number two, bam. Number three, bam. Number four, bam. Number five, bam. Number six, bam. Uh, number seven, bam. The Lord refused them all. So Samuel had to ask, hey, wait a minute, are you Jesse? He said, yes. Is this the house you live in? He said, yes. Are these all your sons? Uh, these are the ones I think could fit the bill. Is there anyone? Uh, there is still the last one. But Oroel Batayemu. We don't know whether it's well or not well. He can come in now and be saying, I hear the Lord say to my Lord, sit on my right hand side until I... 
He said, we will not sit down until he comes. And they went to carry. May they look for you. As they look for Joseph in prison, may they bring out your bring you out of every form of captivity. May they look for you. And it was a butler who told the king, ah, I remember my problem, my sin today. I met one fellow in prison. If you call him all this yaganyaga marabu, who could do nothing, this guy would tell you. By the time he has gone through his refinement, they brought Joseph in. He said, I understand, Pharaoh said. You can interpret dreams that God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. He narrated his dream. <laughs> so Joseph gave the interpretation and then drew out a blueprint for survival. Ah! Even Pharaoh knew there was Holy Spirit. Let me read that story again. Thank you. (laughs) Then he said, you know that the kingdom was mine. And all Israel has set their expectations of me. That I should reign. However, the kingdom has been not about to be turned over. It has happened Friday and Saturday. Say amen today. However, the kingdom has been turned over and has become my brother's, for it was his from the Lord, which is the strongest factor in every electoral cycle, the God factor. (laughs) Tell your neighbor, you do not prosper in any endeavor in life by the expectations of the people. No man can receive anything except it is given him from heaven. Elder Ladak, I hope you still remember your prayer very well. When he got nearly born again, and he said, Elder Ladak will lead us in prayer. I said, Let us pray. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. No man can receive anything except it is given him from heaven. For Mrs. B, it's James 1:17. We thank you, Father God, because every good gift and every perfect gift comes from the from above, from the Father of lights, in whom there's no variable, it's not that the shadow of turning. I know when those two people are praying, they stayed where, what, with what they knew until God began to expand them. What are you saying? You do not prosper by people's expectation. I'm going to take the rest quietly. It doesn't matter who is with who. God has a final say. The same truth applies to supporters fan club. If you pitch your tent with the wrong candidate, you have yourself to blame at the end. Abiathar the priest and all the princes, including Joab, gave their support to Adonijah. Do you want to know why? Because he had chariots, he had horses, and he had a huge war chest. I mean, if a man can get dispatch riders to go before him, 50 of them at his given time in front of his chariot to be saying, hey, Ode, Omabi Lesser, Omabi Lesser, Ode, Ode, ah. 50 men. Igripa, 50. And then he killed sheep, oxen in abundance. Do you know actually, they, <laughs> you do not know that he was made a king. Because they stood before him and they said, Long live King Adonijah before another noise erupted. As for Solomon, he had no chariots. He had no Watches to dispense from. But at the end, he had his father's meal to ride to his own coronation. Uh, <laughs> Baba. 
Akiri sore o, baba ma ku ise o. Baba ma ku ise iyanu o, Jesu ku ise iyanu. Akiri sore. Asore kiri o, baba ma ku ise. History is about to repeat itself. I sat in my house when they called me in 2011. I can see them coming with their chariots again. <laughs> You'll be alive. Uh, Pastor, we are by. Mind your own business. Do you understand me? Ile la putin joko de di. Me only watch us. I'm not fighting a war. Me only chariots. Why? Some trusting chariots, others in horses who will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are falling and And we are raising our help is in the name of the Lord. Okay. We're going to see how it's going to work. I will invite you. You'll be there. Solomon had no chariots, no horses, no war chest, but he rode on his father's mule to the coronation service. Give me First Kings chapter 1. I'm going to take time to read from verse 28 to 40 and then prophesy. We have not gotten to the message you were looking at, Jeremiah. Okay. If I don't finish now, I will continue. There's no hurry. You must get it. Do you know that I've not asked you to support me? Have I sent you to defend me? Did I ask for your vote? <laughs> you can join anyone. But if you end up joining Adonijah, then King David answered and said, Call Bathsheba to me. So she came into the king's presence and stood before the king. And the king took an oath and said, As the Lord lives, who has redeemed my life from every distress, just as I swore to you by the Lord God of Israel, you see, the problem is, hey, Hey, the problem is you do not know what had gone behind the scene. Nathan knew Solomon would be the next king when he was born. God sent a name. He said, go give him the name Jadida. I love this one. I delight in him. And after Nathan had communicated that to David, David swore to Bathsheba not to fear. Your son will be the next king. He was an information or knowledge known just to three people. Do you know what I know? Do you? You think I will tell you? Radio, who are you? Just as I swore to you by the Lord God of Israel, said, Assuredly, Solomon, your son, shall be king after me. So it was not just saying he today. And he shall sit on my throne in my place. So I certainly will do this day. He had no more strength for Abishag. He had all the strength to stand before Bathsheba and Nathan to make this declaration. Then Bathsheba bowed with her face to the earth and paid homage to the king and said, Let my Lord King David live forever. And King David said, call to me Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet. How did he know those who are not? Because Nathan had told him that the kingdom is already divided. As, as Bathsheba was before, each, he was the one who programmed Bathsheba to go to the king in the first place. He said, as you are talking to him, I will come in. And he came in and said, as my Lord changes his mind. This is what has happened. Joab has gone. Abiathar has gone. The princes are with him except me. Because And King David said, Call to me Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah the son of Jehuada. So they came before the king. The king also said to them, Take with you servants of your Lord. 
and have Solomon, my son, ride on my own mule and take him down to Gion. There let Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet anoint him king over Israel and blow the horn and say, Long live King Solomon. Then you shall come after, up after him and he shall come and sit on my throne and he shall be king in my place. For I have appointed him to be ruler over Israel and Judah. Benaiah the son of Jehoiada answered the king and said, Amen. May the Lord God of my Lord the king say so too. As the Lord has been with my Lord the king, even so may he be with Solomon. And may his throne be greater than the throne of my Lord King David. So Zadok the prince, Nathan the prophet, Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, the Keritites, <laughs> and the Pelitites went down and had Solomon ride on King David's mule and took him to Gion. And Zadok the priest took a horn of oil from the tabernacle. I don't know, I did not need anything from the tabernacle. He had been a political guru. The first cousin of Guru Maharaji was a guru. Then Zadok the priest took a horn of oil from the tabernacle and anointed Solomon. And they blew the horn. And all the people said, Long live King Solomon. And all the people went up after him and the people played the flutes and rejoiced with great joy so that the earth seemed to split with their sound. Now Adonijah and all the guests who were with him had it as they finished eating. And when Job heard the sound of the horn, he said, why is he sitting in such a noisy uproar? Go on, go on. While he was still speaking, there came Jonathan, the son of Abiathar the priest. And Adonijah said to him, come in for you are a prominent man and bring good news. And Jonathan answered and said to Adonijah, No, our Lord, King David, has made Solomon king. The king has sent with him Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, the Caritites and the Pelitites, and they have made him ride on the king's mule. Next verse. So Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet have anointed him king at Gion, and they have gone off from there rejoicing, so that the city is an uproar. Days is the noise which you've heard. Also Solomon sits on the throne of the kingdom. You understand me? Listen to me. There was such a loud noise, a great rejoicing. The whole of Israel rejoiced. Listen to me, people of God, and hear me loud and clear. I prophesied to you in 1993 that SDP will fail. NRC will lose, be cut off and swallowed up. The military will fall. Verdict 93, our God reigns. You all were doing like this because you went to vote. And then you voted and you came back on the 13th of June and I said to you, I didn't say you will not vote. I simply said SDP. If you don't vote, there's no way SDP will fail and NRC will. I repeated the same prophecy. And came back on Wednesday thereafter, I said the election will be canceled. It is with the same mouth that I'm saying to you today that I prophesy to you that the great day of Nigeria rejoicing is at hand. Yeah. I, can, I said the great day of Nigeria rejoicing is at hand. Yeah. True change is in the air. Yeah. I can smell it in the name of Jesus. Nothing will disrupt it in the name of Jesus. There will be widespread joy east, west, north, and south of Nigeria. All the killings will come to an end. All the kidnapping will come to an end in the mighty name of Jesus. There will be great joy in Nigeria. Somebody rejoice before the Lord of us. See now, I am sure you know it was after Solomon had been crowned as king that judgment came upon Abiathar. Not just for supporting the wrong candidate, but also for a prophetic guided missile released by God Almighty 
against his ancestor, namely Eli, the priest, for bastardizing, for bastardizing the priesthood. If he was just supporting Adonijah, that was the issue, it would not be this calamitous for him. But all the time that he was serving David, doing the right things and doing things right, there was no crack in his life for that missile to penetrate and knock him off. But the day he joined the wrong candidate, there was such a gap in his life. And the missile that was looking for where to land just landed on him. Give me 1 Kings chapter 2, verses 26 and 27. <laughs> First Kings 2, 26 to 27. And to Abiathar the priest, the king, that is Solomon, said, Go to Anathoth, to your own fields, for you are the servant of death. But I will not put you to death at this time because you carry the ark of the Lord God before my father David and because you are afflicted every time my father was afflicted. So Solomon removed Abiathar from being priest to the Lord that he might fulfill the word of the Lord that he spoke concerning the house of Eli at Shiloh. Do you remember again who Abiathar was? He went through a thick and thin with David. He carried the Ark of the Covenant. He told him the mind of God every time. Shall I, shall I stay in Keilah? Shall I leave Keilah? He was the one giving him all the directives. He had the effort with him. With precision. And last minute, he took a wrong step. He supported a wrong candidate. And the crack opened. And the missile hit him. Stand to your feet. Number one prayer. Lord, grant me the grace to run this Christian race according to the standard set by you. Lord, grant me the grace to run this Christian race According to the standard set by you, let me make no rules of convenience for myself, rules of indulgence for myself. Deliver me from self-destruction. In the name of Jesus, grant me the grace to run this Christian race according to the standard set by you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I want you to pray further. Say with me, help me, O Lord. To finish well and to finish strong in my life. I pray, my Father, that nothing, absolutely nothing, will disqualify me last minute at the end of my sojourn on earth in the mighty name of Jesus. Give me First Corinthians chapter number 9. I want you to pray this prayer seriously. <laughs> First Corinthians 9. 24. Thank you. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run? How many of you know there is only one presidential seat? Do you understand this thing? Do you know that you will see you will see people as begin to jostle for power? Do you not know? That those who run in a race or run, but one receives the prize. Run in such a way that you may obtain it. I want you to pray, Lord, let me run according to your set standard. Let me run in a way that is pleasing unto you. Let me not run according to the whims and caprices of men, according to the dictates of men, according to the permutations of men. Let me run the race of life according to the standard of God. Help me, O oh Lord. So that I will obtain. I will not labor in vain or bring forth for trouble. I don't want anything that you don't want. I do not want anything that is not in line with my destiny. I declare your kingdom come. Your will be done in my life as it is in heaven. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let your mighty hand remain upon me to keep me steady. And to keep me focused on you all the days of my life. In Jesus mighty name. And everyone who competes for the prize. Is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore, I run doors, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, like you are in the gym practicing, and then you never get involved in a real competition. You are a boxer boxing the air. 
But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection. Lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. Lord, deliver me from everything that can disqualify. Deliver me from them. Don't let them fast into my soul. Deliver me from everything that will disqualify me at the end of the day. Lest after I've preached unto others, I myself will become a castaway in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Ezekiel chapter 18. I want you to listen because you will be wondering how did this thing hate Abiathar? Ezekiel 18, 1 to 4. The word of the Lord came to me again saying, what do you mean when you use this proverb concerning the land of Israel saying, the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, you shall no longer use this proverb in Israel. Behold, our souls are mine. The soul of the father as well as the soul of the son is mine. The soul who sins shall die. So ancestral causes, generational causes would not have affected him if he stayed in line. Did you get it? For as long as he was doing the right things and doing things right and was loyal absolutely to David. Do you know he was a soul survivor? The whole clan of priesthood was wiped out. Killed by murderous soul. He commanded the soldiers to kill them. They said, no, we can't kill the priests. But Doeg, the Edomite, was there. He killed them all. The only man who escaped was Adon Abiathar. He escaped to run to David. And David said to him, who is looking for you? Is looking for me. You'll be safe with me. I knew this would happen when I saw Doeg, the Edomite, the day I was taken the sword of Goliath. I know it will happen. Everyone spying on you to tell on you. Hey, they hold the dig, they will fall into them. In the name of Jesus Christ. If there was no crack in Abiathar's life, it would not have hit. I want you to pray today. I want you to, that no past blunders in my life, in my family tree, will destroy my destiny or the future destinies of my children and children's children in the name of Jesus. No crack in my life. I put on the whole armor of God. I put on the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank God for the blood. There will be no hole for the enemy to penetrate through. No ancestral curses, no generational curses will operate in my life because there is no space, there is no crack for any lizard to come through. In the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you, Father. The past blunders will not destroy future destinies in Jesus' mighty name. Listen to me. What was it that got Abiathar into trouble? Do you know? The Bible says evil association corrupt good manners. He has a man with track record of loyalty. But he looked at David. He couldn't move anymore. He was a priest, not a prophet. Do you understand me? He couldn't discern what was happening. And he saw Adonijah very promising. And he's also a prince. And he switched come. Last minute. Last minute. Last minute. Last minute! Give me Proverbs 12, 26. Proverbs 12, 26. The writer should choose his friends... Carefully, for the way of the wicked leads them astray. Proverbs 13 20. Proverbs 19 20. 13 20. He who walks with wise men will be wise. Look, when he did not find Nathan the prophet there, did he look for him? They were together, they were peers, they were serving David. He didn't seem, did he go to look for him? Wow, all my finger call on me. Uh, I don't know, man sent notes to me. Uh, <laughs> you would have told it, my Lord Bell. Uh, why? I can't tell you, but my Lord Bell is not a winning wheel. He who works with wise men will be wise, but the companion of fools 
will be destroyed. I want you to pray, Lord, guide me in my relationships. Who I talk to, who I relate with, guide me in my relationships hereafter. Let me not back a wrong horse. In the name of Jesus, help me, O oh Lord. We pray today that we'll be temperate in all things. A missionary is not a mission in a hurry. In the mighty name of Jesus, guide our steps every inch of the way, every second of the day. Help me, O oh Lord. Evil association robs good manners. In Jesus' mighty name. I have two more prayer points. I'll leave the rest. I think I'll jump on Jeremiah tomorrow on, on Monday. I think I will jump on Jeremiah, it will be part three, because I need to expose Jeremiah to you. Do you know Jeremiah did not only blame God, he cursed the day he was born. He saw what God said to him, I'm setting you a prophet. I've ordained you from your mother's womb. You will root out, you will do this. Instead of rooting out nations, it was one being rooted out. He cursed the day he was born. He said, God, what kind of judgment or justice is this? And God had to respond. You are, you are still warming up. You are walking with footmen. Calvary men are still coming. Little thing will cause you to spark and to start blaming God. Uh, let me finish with these prayers. And, and, and we will take it from Monday by God's grace. Are you ready? Please note that just as truth divides, politics also divides. That's why I do not ask any of you to join any party. I've never compelled any of you. I've never written to you. I've never counseled. I've never said, follow me. I've never. Truth divides. Politics also divides. And please hear me. You can lose all in life, including your life, by teaming up with those already rejected by God. You don't have to do anything. You just have to team up with anyone rejected by God and you become rejected yourself. It's as simple as that. This happened to Joab. The scheming and ambitious amici to King David who shed the blood of war. In time of, you remember how he killed Abner? And what did David say? He said the blood will be upon your belt and he told his son Solomon his head must not be on his neck. And now... Nobody could kill him. He was part of the establishment. He was part of the, the structure. He was part of the cabinet. Until he joined Abiathar. And then he ran to the temple and heard the horns. That's when they become spiritual. And they told Solomon, he, was, he said, kill him there. And drag him out. In the name of Jesus. Everyone in the politics of Nigeria who has shed innocent blood, who have killed others because of their ambition in the name of Jesus, their hour of disqualification has come. The blood they shed will begin to speak against them in the name of Jesus. He who kills by the sword shall be killed by the sword. He who leads into captivity shall be led into captivity. This is the faith and the patience of sin. Everyone with blood in your hands. Killing and maiming because of power. Your end has come. As Joab met his Waterloo, so shall you meet yours in 2021. In the mighty name of Jesus. Last prayer. Please note that politics can also divide a household. Those who think we've turned pulpit into a podium don't have wisdom. I'm training you, I'm helping you to come to clarity, to come to understanding. I'd never told any of you to join this party. If I've ever told anyone, lift up your hand. I'll present truth before you. You make your choice. Truth can also divide a household. Truth is that I will turn mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, father-in-law against son-in-law. 
A man's enemy will be members of his own house. So don't think I've come to the earth. Uh-huh. I've brought sword. Truth divides. So politics can divide a household. Yeah. I want to appeal to you. Husbands and wives. In the name of Jesus. Agree to disagree, disagree to agree. Immediately, do not let politics divide your household. You say, give me an example of what, where that happened. It happened in the household of Nabal. Nabal, by his utterance, was in support of Saul. Abigail was in support of David. Let's read and pray. 1 Samuel 25. 2 to 12. 1 Samuel 25, 2 to 12. Now there was a man in Mount whose business was in Camel. And the man was very rich, loaded, money back. He had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats. And he was sharing his sheep in Camel. The name of the man was Nabal and the name of his wife Abigail. And she was a woman of good understanding and beautiful appearance. Remember what I said on Friday also? I said she was a dove living in the nest of a vulture. But the man was harsh and evil in his doings. He was of the house of Caleb. When David heard in the wilderness that neighbor was sharing his sheep, David sent 10 young men. <laughs> 10 is a number of responsibility. He sent 10 young men and he would die 10 days after. And David said to the young men, go up to Carmel, go to Nabal, and greet him in my name. And those who shall say to him who lives in prosperity, peace to you, peace to your house, and peace to all that you have. It's a Davidic greeting. Now I've heard that you are shearers. Your shepherds were with us, and we did not hurt them. Nor was there anything missing from them. All the while they were in Carmel. Ask your young men, and they will tell you, therefore let my young men find favor in your eyes, for we come on a feast day. Please give whatever comes to your hand to your servants and to your son. They, can, can, this, can humility be more than this? So when David's young men came, they spoke to Nabal according to all these words in the name of David and waited. And Nabal answered David's servant and said, who is David? Who is the son of Jesse? There are many servants nowadays who break away each from his master. Who was the master of David? Saul. So, who is break away spirit? David. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my meat that I've killed for my sharers and give it to men when I do not know where they are from? This was the man who killed Goliath. The whole of Israel knew him. Uh, of Israel knew him. And you despised him that way. So David was angry. He was going to kill. Ah. Abigail ran, played the role of an intercessor, and pleaded with him not to do so. Nabal died 10 days after for supporting the wrong person. Abigail became the wife of the right candidate. Hey. Be careful hey. so that your wealth is not transferred to somebody else because of wrong support. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord God in his mercies remove every foolish Nabal from the bully politic of Nigeria in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands and say from this moment, Lord, guide me, guide me, guide Mr. President in the choices he makes hereafter so that he can have a lasting legacy. Lord, let your hands be upon President Muhammad Buhari in the choices he will make in this hour because the change of God is starting right now. Before we finish this fast, you will see, you will hear all things are about to begin to happen in our nation with bewildering rapidity rapidity that will set Nigeria on course. We are not going to die in this shame, in this inglorious position. This nation is going to rise in the mighty name of Jesus. Be careful who you give your support to because the person you join can take you to hell. They can take you to heaven. There is hell on earth. Jonah cried in the belly of, of the fish. He said, I found myself in hell. Hell can be an experience. May you gain wisdom to choose your friends right. To give your support to those approved by God. 
Ile ni Solomon wa kwatu wa pe o. He had no chariots, he had no horses. History is about to repeat itself. And you are all witnesses. May God keep you. May he empower you. You will not have cause to blame God in the days to come. Your mouth will be filled with his praises. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for your patience. God bless you.